Hello, I'm going to record a quick and simple video to discuss uh, <coughs> a couple of things that make your life easier as you're first starting out. Uh, watch tables, force tables, and system bits. I may have discussed system bits in another lecture, but I want to highlight how they're used here um, in this lecture. So first and foremost, I got a simple simple rung in there. So one switch will turn uh, directly tied into tie, oh, uh, turn on and out. Fairly straightforward. Now, in other PLC applications, you might be able to hit a watch feature and all your active bits can show up. Um, so all the ones that you're using, but you might have a big program or you might have a specific matter of interest and you may only want to look at a few of them at a time or only your outputs or only your inputs. And so in um, Siemens, we can add specialized watch tables. And look over here, you'll see a, a, a tab that says, watch and force tables. So I can add a new watch table and I can then start putting in my tags. Now, something that I, I've showed before, but I wanna show it again. Here's all my default tags. If you go up to here where it says float and click float, that will separate and you can start using that to um, drop and drag things for you. So if I go into my uh, watch table, I can start drop and drag in my outputs I want to watch and inputs I want to watch. So, so let me go into my output here, add that here, and you can see it's starting to add, which is nice. I'm going to type everything, drop in and dragging. And you could, in theory, potentially highlight a bunch. Uh, maybe you can. Uh, you probably can. I'm just doing this in a hurry, so just bear with me. I also have status bits, and I'm going to show you some of this. So here's a first scan bit I can monitor, and clock bits. I will remind you in a second how that works, but let me just go in here and monitor two different clock bits and show you how those work. Got to make sure I add them right. All right. So here's a various amount of bits. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my tag table. Goodbye, tag table. And just to remember how I created those. Now, at Siemens, I'm going to do a little bit of backtracking. In Siemens, if I go under device configuration and click on my double click on the PLC, down here at the, in, in your, your general menu, you can go down under system and clock memory bits. And if you highlight both of these checks right here, the system will automatically populate some various system memory bits and clock memory bits that you can utilize in your program. So things like first scan or if there's a diagnostic, a diagnostic status change, like, you know, one for maintenance mode, for instance, um, or from start to run. Uh, let me trash that. Or in different clock bits. So if you want to blink, have a link, blinky light, you can use these clock bits, as I'll show you in a second. So let's go in my main routine, and, and I'll pull, I'm going to pull this up because I want to highlight a couple things. I'm going to lower that. So here's my main routine. I'm going to float the window so we can monitor something, as well as our watch table here. I'll float that out, too. So, that, so now I will start to toggle my bits, and we can monitor things. Okay, so let me... Talk about bits and monitor things. Oh, wait, I don't see anything changing. Because remember, when I monitor something, I have to be live. So I can monitor all the values once right now, or I can monitor them all the time continuously. So if I click on the sunglasses with the one, it's going to do one scan cycle and then say false. Awesome. If I hit it again, false. Um, but if I hit continuous, I should be able to monitor that here. And you can see the one input that I'm not using as I click on. Now, I don't know why these clock bits aren't working as they should. I downloaded my, I may have to download my, re-download my hardware configuration. Let me try that. 
Yep, I had to redownload my hardware configuration. So if I, and because in, in this case, I just went in and clicked those boxes and I downloaded. But because this is a hardware change, you need to rebuild your hardware and redownload it. So to get these clock bits active, and you can see them flashing now, um, that's how you would do that. So just because something is there and in your tags, doesn't you you and if they're not working, you would have to download your new uh, or re-download your hardware configuration. And that's all I did. I just cut it out for the safer time. Um, so yeah, now I can watch these things. Awesome. And now I can program with these th with these system bits. So I'm going to pull my tags out again and do a float because it's easier. And so why not? Let me go in here. Let me go, go into here, and I'm going to do everything in one network so I don't do, like, go between a bunch of stuff. Oh, come on. Let me go offline. Maybe that's a, go offline. So here we go. Let me go in here, highlight it. There we go, finally. And if I go in here, I can take my, I'll take my diagnosis system update and I will throw that into output to, I will go ahead and put in this and I will show you clock bit. Right here. And put this on output number three. Drop and drag. Outstanding. And what the hey. Uh, first scan. Uh, first scan. And I will do, uh, do output number seven. Okay, so let me download this and we'll go live. I will now hide this. So let me download this to, to the controller. Yes, overwrite main block. And let me go online. So we can watch. So here's my status. You can see it blinky blinky. I'm going to hit stop. Yes, I want to stop. I want to show you this first scan. So I just hit from run. So if I go, once I go to run, you can see that was on temporarily. So I'll show you this again. It was on. See that for a brief second, it was on because the first time it scans through, it's going to highlight this output or whatever's here. So this is a good way to clear things by using this first scan bit. And you can see with this clock bit, it keeps flashing. Now let's talk about forcing. Forcing would be a good thing. Thing only, and you should use this only and only if you're needing to do maintenance. If you need to turn off an output to remove a piece of a malfunctioning equipment and you can't get the conditions met. This is only to be used when you are in maintenance. Please do not utilize this to fix an issue. Uh, it's been known before in other applications that people will just force on an input in order to make something happen. And that's not a very good thing because when you try to change things, that will create issues down the line. So only if you put in a force, remove it once you're done. So now here's how we do force. It looks a lot like the watch list, except we just got to add our tags that we want to, you know, watch. So I'm going to uh, enforce. So I can add my tag. So I'll, we will use the tags that I have. So output number one and input number one. So here we go. If I want to force this on, all I got to do is right click and force to one. Well, that you do you want to do that? Yes. And until the F shows up,
you will, and if you look on your display, you'll see an F here, and the output light on the PLC will be on. And I wish I had a, if I had good video skills, I would inlay it right now. So this is the way the controller will look. This is the way the controller will look physically. You'll see, if you notice here, the blinking light. Now it's a little off because I haven't synced the videos. And you can see the output here is on. So you can see that the blinking here, output light on. You also notice that up here that the run stop is green, but the maintenance is orange. And that's what happens with the force. The force will turn on the output, but it doesn't look like it'll be this same way on here. It's just overriding what the logic is saying. And so if I toggle this input, it's it's going to continue to run. Now, it, it, this is not a real-time feed, so I don't, you know, uh, I will pull that off the side so you don't see that anymore. Um, there, it, it's, the logic is no longer affecting it. You're overriding it. You're forcing something on. So notice, notice, so here's my clock bit still flashing. Here's my first scan. Um, I thought this would do something. Maybe I misremembering something, so ignore, but that's how you would do something with it. Uh, how do I, and if I force an input, so first I'll take this force off. So I'll force this, I'll for, stop forcing this. And now I can force on my input. So here's my input. Let me force this to one. So force all, or force one, sorry. And now, take a, what I want to show you is, this is what the PLC will look like. Notice there's no input on, even though the output should be on. Now, I, I recorded this with another, with an input three forced, so it will look identical to the other one. But there's no output on. So if I force this other, so I'm forced this to zero, and I'm going to force this to one. You can, this is what it will look like. The maintenance light is on, and then just the blinky, the blinky light is taking place. So as you can see, that's what the PLC looks like. No inputs turn on on the front end with the force. And that's why this is dangerous. Because remember, the, this only lights up if a physical electrical signal is supplied to the input terminal associated with this indicator light. This is just turning on the logic inside the program. So this is why you use input forcing very, very, very carefully. Output forcing that will turn on the light because that's what we're controlling is the output to turn on something on the exterior. So just keep that in mind if you're doing input forcing. So to, and to stop all this, I just go up to here, stop all forces and remove that. Now it's important because I found this out the hard way. Um, make sure that you stop your forces or it won't, it won't allow you to make changes until you do. Uh, I had I had this I was doing this PLC in another program forgot to take forces off and moved it from a lab to my office and I had to go online and remove the forces in the controller before I could download my new program. But that is clock bits that is system bits um, that is uh, watch tables and force tables. Uh, thank you for your time and I hope you have a good day and sorry if this wasn't my best video ever. Uh, doing this in my office during the day gets me interrupted sometimes. So thank you.